Good evening, everybody. Here we are, another class. And today we're going to start a new unit. Um, it's going to be unit 9A, Truth and Lies. And I would like to tell you that at the end of the class, I'm going to send you a drama explanation and um, a video and some games for you to practice online. So, are you ready? Let's start. Open your books on page 84 to lies. Everybody, ready? Here we are. And let's start. Here it is. Page 84, Truth and Lies. This is the topic and this is the page. I love, please, this is a humorous quote. I love this uh, quote and uh, it deals with, it explains very well the topic of this class. Advertising is the art of convincing people to spend money they don't have on something they don't need. Then, what's today's topic about? advertising business and the way adverts can tell us lies. To begin with, look at this advert. What is it being advised? It's, these are the questions that we're going to be asked. What is it being advertised? What decade do you think it is from? What decade is it from? And why do you think, very strange, no? Uh, why do you think they used a doctor in the advert? Then, lucky strike, yeah. Then, what is it being advertised? A packet of cigarettes, yeah. A packet of cigarettes. Yeah, and the brand was Lucky Strike. They told me once, me, me contaron, que la, el nombre viene de Strike, un golpe, un choque entre dos camiones que llevaban diferentes tipos de tabaco. Lucky, afortunadamente, fue afortunado y la mezcla es Lucky Strike. Well, advertising for sure. Well, what decade? Do you remember? Then look at this design, this design, um, 20,679 physicians say Lucky's are less irritating, it's toasted. Wow, your throat, protection against irritation, against cough. Oh my God, they are advertising cigarettes, tobacco, that it's good for your throat, less irritating, and here you have a doctor advertising a packet of cigarettes. What do you think? Well, I think the design is the 1920s. Yeah, the 1920s design. And why do you think they used a doctor? Well, it's a kind of making the doctor um, in the advert, yeah, the ad use doctors. Mm -hmm. The image of a doctor to advertise, we could say that to advertise that a smoking could be not so bad, yeah, we could say that, and that they approved in certain way some brands than the other, then for example, lucky, less irritating for your throat. Nowadays, it couldn't be possible yeah, to be the doctor, but we know that some adverts are a little misleading. Hmm? We are going to read the first paragraph. 
it says read the first paragraph and check. We're going to read the first paragraph. Then four of the most misleading adverts of all time. Misleading es engañoso. Hay muchos anuncios engañosos. Number one says cigarettes are not harmful to your health. Hard to believe, but there was a time when tobacco companies actually tried to make us believe that doctors approved of smoking or that certain brands were better for your throat than others. This advert for Lucky Strike from the 1920s is just one of dozens of ads featuring doctors recommending or preferring one brand over another. Tobacco companies continue to use doctors to convince the public to smoke until the 1950s, when evidence showing the link between smoking and lung cancer became too strong to ignore. I would like, um, while we are waiting, to focus on this highlighted vocabulary because we are going to do different kinds of um, exercises. Read the whole article and answer the questions. Write one to four next to sentences A to F because the reading is divided into four paragraphs, four different advertisements. So, adverts. So, you have to say, for example, which company or which companies A deceived the public by pretending that their product had properties which it didn't really have. The dictionary said, which company, yeah? Which companies? Uh, advert one, two, three, or four, yeah? B. Which one used a celebrity or a professional person in order for them to associate their product with a healthy lifestyle? C. Use technology to create a false impression. D. Admitted that they had made a claim that wasn't true. E. Admitted that they had done something wrong. And F was punished for their misleading efforts, castigado, punished. Then, the first exercise for you to do is going to do is going to do this. Then, which company? Then you have to write uh, other one or other three. Yeah. Then here you have other one, other two, Dathina, Tabeta. Three vitamins prevent cancer. Oh my god. And four, you can lose weight without dieting or doing exercise. Oh my god, tell me how can you do that? <laughs> and uh, the second exercise we have to do is here you have highlighted words and you have to match the highlighted words or phrases with these um, definitions. Or meaning, I'm going to read them down, read them down aloud, so you can match. For example, number one is done for you. Advertisement, notices or pictures or films telling people about the product. Number two, you have to find the noun. Advertisement on the radio or TV. How are they called? Three, two. Now, two abbreviations for advertisement and two ways of abbreviating advertisement. Number four, you have to uh, find a verb saying that something is true. Number five, famous people who promote a product. How are they called? It's a verb. Digitally change details in a photograph. Number seven, a noun. Types of products made by a particular company. Number eight, we need a verb to, a verb. Took a person or company to court to ask for money because of something they said or did to harm you. Number nine, an adjective. Giving the wrong idea or impression making you believe something that is not true. 
and number 10, it's a noun, people who buy goods or use services. And the last one, number 11, a series of advertising messages with the same thing. Then, what do you have to do? I'm going to read aloud um, the text and you have to do these exercises matching the highlighted words and phrases and you have to tell me which company in advert 1, 2, 3 or 4 uh, answer these questions. You understand? In two different kinds. I had already uh, read number one. Let's read number two. Athena Tabet. In 2009, fashion retailer Ralph Lauren made a series of advertisement using a model who was so heavily airbrushed that her waist appeared to be smaller than her head. The ads were widely criticized in the press and the expert warned of the negative effect these kinds of images may have on young girls. Lauren threatened to sue a blogger, who was the first person to publish and comment on the image online. But later, he made a statement apologizing and admitting that we are responsible for the poor imaging and retouching that resulted in a very distorted image of a woman's body. However, he later fired the model in the advert, Philippa Hamilton, because she was overweight. She weighed 55 kilos. Oh my God. Number three, vitamins prevent cancer. In 2010, the pharmaceutical company Bayer was sued by the Center for Science in the Public Interest for running TV and radio commercials that suggested one of the ingredients in it, in its one-a-day vitamin supplement brand, prevented prostate cancer. In fact, there is no scientific evidence that vitamins fight cancer in any way. Bayer eventually paid a fine and signed a legal agreement which banned it from claiming that vitamins can cure cancer. So amazing, how amazing. And the last one, number four. You can lose weight without dieting or doing exercise. During the 1990s, a former, a U.S. fitness company, run an advertising campaign using TV commercials in which baseball player Steve Gervais promoted two diet supplements, a fat trap huh? that supposedly blocked the absorption of fat and a product named Exercise in a Bottle. These two products together, according to the ad, would allow you to lose weight without dieting or exercise and promise consumers that they would never have to diet again. The Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, took garbage to court for making false claims about the product. So, began an epic legal battle with the FTC, ultimately lost when a federal court ruled that celebrity endorsers were not responsible for misleading statements in ads. However, this ruling eventually led to the passing of new regulations making it illegal for celebrities to make false statements of fact in advertisement. Then, I would like you to pause the video, farewell video, and please do both of these exercises. Both exercises to do it now, because we are going to correct in a minute. Then, let's start number one. Which company or companies A deceived the public by pretending that their products have properties which it didn't really have? Well, company three, vitamins prevent cancer. And four, 
Yeah, you can lose weight without dieting. This um, deceived the public by pretending uh, that they had certain properties. Very good. Did you do it well? Then, let's go on. B. Use a celebrity or a professional person in order for them to associate your product with a healthy lifestyle? Well, number one, uh, a doctor, a professional person, yeah? And um, number four, yeah, uh, because they used a baseball player, a celebrity. C. Which company used technology to create a false impression? Yeah. Q. Yeah. Retocado. Airbrush. A model. Imagine. You have to use technology to create a false impression. And she was only 54 kilos. Amazing. D. Uh, admitted that they had made a claim that wasn't true. Yeah, number three, claiming that vitamins can cure cancer, yeah, and E, admitted that they had done something wrong, yeah, number two, the thinner the better, Ralph Lauren admitted that they had used uh, airbrush, I'm sorry, F. I'm going to write it here, F, yeah, was punished, vitamins prevent cancer, yeah, punished for a misleading uh, advert. Then these were the results, then A, 3 and 4, B, 1 and 4, Z, 2, D, 3, E, advertising 2, and F, advertising trip. Then we have this exercise finished and now let's look for highlighted words and phrases in the text. Then number two I'm going to show you yeah here that is better. Then number two commercials a commercial is a noun because commercials are the advertisements on the radio or TV. La propaganda. Haz la propaganda después del, de la serie esta. Mm? Commercials. Number three, the abbreviation for advertisement. You can use advert or ads. Both of them are correct. Number four, claiming means saying that something is true. Afirmar. Afirman, claiming that something is true. Aseguran sería. Uh, five, celebrity endorsers are the famous people who promote um, a product. Son patrocinadores, uh, endorsers. Celebrity endorsers. Number six, airbrushed is the verb for me, meaning that digitally you can take details in a photograph. Uh, airbrush is uh, uh, pintura en aerosol, mm? es airbrush, es, y es utilizar digitalmente un retoca, retocar, mm? airbrush. Seven, uh, brands is a noun, meaning types of product made by the particular company, las marques, los productos, mm? de diferentes marques. Zood, it's a verb, took a person or company to court. Uh, take legal action. When you take legal action, uh, tú demandas, uh, demandar a alguien o a una compañía, zu, en pasado, zu, take legal action. Misleading is the adjective giving the wrong idea or impression, engañosa, misleading advert. Mm. Ten, consumers, it's a noun, people who buy goods or use services, they are consumers, yeah. And an advertising campaign, a series of advertising messages with the same thing. La campaña de anuncios, advertising 
campaign. Then these were this was important vocabulary, yeah, important words you needed uh, to find and match with the meaning regarding the text. Then, what we are going to do now? We are going to listen to an advertising. Uh, uh, we are going to look at advertisement for mascara, and um, this product was withdrawn because it was very misleading. Mm -hmm. Then we are going to listen to a radio program. We are on page now eight to five. Yeah, look, this um, is, is this was the advertisement for a mascara. Yeah, and the the, uh, the campaign was withdrawn, fue eliminado, uh, apartado, because it was misleading. Well, then here you have possibilities, different tricks, trucos used by advertisers. In the lesson of this radio program, you have to match, you have to take, sorry, you have to take the things that the woman mentions that are often used in adverts. We have different, for example, free gifts, que te van a regalar algo, la tuito. Limited supplies of the products, no quedan in the stock, no quedan productos. Two for one offers, animals in nature, Crowds of people, a good slogan, attractive models, doctors and celebrities, a smiling, happy families in the advertisement, advertising, good music or a good song used in the advert, recent studies or humor, using humor. Mm -hmm. And reason, antique, the things that the woman mentioned. Five point two. The first point to bear in mind is that nothing but nothing is ever free. How often have you seen adverts saying things like, uh, get a free MP3 player when you subscribe to our magazine for six months? There's something about the word free that immediately attracts us. I want it. It makes us feel clever, as if we're going to get something for nothing. But of course, that MP3 player, which incidentally will probably break the second time you use it, wasn't free at all. In spite of what the advert said, its price was really included in the magazine subscription. So don't trust any advert which offers something for free. A second trick which advertisers use is when they tell us, there are only a few left, buy now while stocks last. What happens to us when we read or hear these words? Even though we don't really need the products and uh, maybe don't even like them, we immediately want to be among the lucky few who have them. But let's be clear about this. Companies just don't run out of products. Do you really think the manufacturers couldn't produce a few more if they thought they could sell them? Of course they could. When it comes to new products, we, the consumers, are like sheep, and we follow each other. So, another way advertisers have of getting us to use something is to tell us everybody's using it. And of course, we think everybody can't be wrong, so the product must be fantastic. So as to make us believe it, they use expressions like, it's a must-have, or it's the in thing. And they combine this with a photograph of a large group of people so that we can't fail to get the message. But don't be fooled. Even if everybody is using it, and they may not be, everybody can be wrong. Another favorite message is, you too can look like this, accompanied by a photo of a fabulous looking man or woman. But the problem is, you can't look like this because actually the woman or man in the photo is a model. And also because he or she doesn't really look like that either. The photo has been airbrushed in order to make the model look even slimmer, with uh, perfect skin and even more attractive than they are in real life. Finally, what most annoys me is, trust me, I'm a doctor, or trust me, I'm a celebrity. Uh, the idea is that if a celebrity is using the product, it must be fantastic. 
or if a doctor recommends it, it must really work. But be careful. Although the actress is holding the product in the photo, do you really think she colors her hair with it at home? And uh, the doctor in the advert, is he really a doctor or just an actor wearing a white coat? Adverts also often mention a particular organization which recommends their product. Uh, for example, things like, Our dog biscuits are recommended by the International Association of Dog Nutritionists. Well, that's probably an organization which the company set up themselves. Or, a recent independent study found that our toothpaste cleans your teeth better than any other brand. Uh, what study was it? Who commissioned the study? It was probably produced for the company itself and paid for by them too. Well, very interesting. Um, if you need another time to listen to it, remember it is recorded in the, um, in the video and you have the audio, you have access to the audio. Then, let's see uh, the things that the woman mentions. Now, she mentions that the things that are often used in adverts, of course, free gifts. And if when it's something is free, we want it. But uh, he said that it's tricky because uh, maybe you have already paid for it. Hmm? Limited supplies of the products. Wow. Well, they, they say that there are limited supplies, but maybe it's not right. It's not true. Hmm? Because... They could easily produce more if they if they want to. They don't run out of the products and it's a lie. Crowds of people, they say everyone is using it, then maybe it's not true. And then if everybody is using it, it's because it's good or everybody can be wrong, then it's not a good way of saying everybody is using it. And crowds of people, we, we say, it says in the listening that we behave like she. Then, attract models. Wow. Advertisers say that we can look like models, but we can't because we aren't models. And also remember that pictures, photos can be airbrushed. Another way that the woman say that the doctors and celebrities are advertising it, but maybe it's not a doctor. The picture, the, 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 the man or the woman that appeared is not a doctor, indeed. And that certain celebrities, they are celebrity endorsers, but they don't really know about the product. And the last one, uh, this might be, they have done or paid for, uh, paid for the advertising company themselves. In recent studies, maybe the company itself paid for the recent studies to have the results they really want to. Then, these were the five tricks that advertisers use, use, normally use in the advertising. Then, lying, lying, lying in advertising. And what it appeared was this. Today we are going to we are going to talk about a very important grammatical point. It's very important because it deals with clauses of contrast. How do we contrast per una banda, per l'altra, mm, malgrat el fet que, a pesar que, vale? Uh, these clauses of contrast are very important in your writing. And purpose, clauses of purpose, the propósito de finalidad. ¿Por qué hacemos las cosas? Para conseguir, per tal la conseguir, then. These are very confusing and today I would like to explain clauses of contrast and purpose. It says, look at some extracts from the listening and complete them with the phrases A to G. We are on page 85, 3, grammar. Hmm? I'm going to read aloud, and you have to match these sentences that appeared in the listening with these sentences. And what is highlighted? Highlighted are the connectors 
used to express contrast and purpose. These are the linkings you will need to express contrast or purpose. Then, oh no, better. Then I'm going to read, and you have to match with A, the company itself, B, the actress is holding the product in the photo, C, we can't fail to get the message, D, make us believe it, E, we don't really need the product, F, what the other said, and G, make the models look even slimmer. Yeah? Then... What do you think? One, in spite of its price was really included in the magazine subscription. In spite of. Two, even though, and maybe don't even like them, we merely want to be among the lucky few who have them. Three, so much to we need a word. They use expressions like it's a must have. A must have is a must and debes tenerlo. Four, un esencial, un imprescindible. Four, and they combine this with a photograph of a large group of people. So that... Five, the photo has been airbrushed in order to... Un verbo with perfect skin and even more attractive than they are in real life. 6. Although, do you really think she colors her hair with it at home? And number 7. It was probably produced for and paid for by them too. Then, pause the video, parable video, and try to match these sentences including one of these and after that we are going to listen to it Doesn't work. I thought it was going to work. Now. 5.3. 1. In spite of what the advert said, its price was really included in the magazine subscription. 2. Even though we don't really need the products and uh, maybe don't even like them, we immediately want to be among the lucky few who have them. Three, so as to make us believe it, they use expressions like, it's a must-have. Four, and they combine this with a photograph of a large group of people so that we can't fail to get the message. Five, the photo has been airbrushed in order to make the model look even slimmer, with uh, perfect skin and even more attractive than they are in real life. 6. Although the actress is holding the product in the photo, do you really think she colors her hair with it at home? 7. It was probably produced for the company itself and paid for by them too. Listen again and complete. 5.3 Doesn't work. Now listen again. 5.3 1. In spite of what the advert said, its price was really included in the magazine subscription. 2. 
even though we don't really need the products and uh, maybe don't even like them, we immediately want to be among the lucky few who have them. E. Three. So as to make us believe it, they use expressions like, it's a must-have. D. Four. And they combine this with a photograph of a large group of people so that we can't fail to get the message. C or C. Five. The photo has been airbrushed in order to make the model look even slimmer, with the perfect skin and even more attractive than they are in real life. Six. Although the actress is holding the product in the photo, six do you B. really think she colors her hair with it at home? Yeah, 6B. 7. It was probably produced for the company itself. The company itself, A. Paid for by them too. What? Well, very important, yeah, the way we, or what kind of sentence we use after these linkings, connectors, showing contracts or purpose. Uh, for example, in spite of F, what the adverb said, then we have here a sentence. A pesar de lo que decía el anuncio, then in spite of plus a sentence. Number two, even though it's E, we don't really need the products. Then we have another sentence. Then maybe even though plus a sentence. Number three, so as to, it introduces purpose, finalidad. Es como un in order to, es un per tal de, para. Mm? So as to, the make us believe. Then for sure, that so as to is followed by a verb. Number four, a large group of people, so that we can't fail to get the message. So that it introduces purpose, but it's followed by a sentence, not a verb. Five, the photo has been airbrushed in order to G, make the models look even slimmer. Another verb. Then, Purpose in order to plus infinity plus a verb. Number six, although B, the actress is holding the product in the photo, then although uses a sentence and always a comma. Then although it's a contrast linking word connector, then it must be followed by a sentence. And number seven, it was probably produced for the company itself. The company, it's a noun, and for is used for purpose. Then, what can you think about that? That certain clauses of contrast are used, are introduced by different linking words. And different, each linking word uses a different structure, yeah? That that's what we are going to explain now. The clauses of contrast are used with certain linking words and purpose and other ones. And each one is followed by a different uh, structure that now we are going to explain. Then it was. Um, then this is the explanation. Then which linking words, which linking words are used uh, in the highlighted words to express contrast? Well, we saw in spite of, a pesar de, que es un sinónimo, son sinónimos de despite, they are synonyms. Another one, even though, incluso, that is a synonym of although. Mm -hmm. Although, and they usually are used by a sentence and a comma. Although it was raining, we went out. Mm -hmm. And which ones were used? 
which linking words were used to express purpose? Well, we had in order to, para, so was to, synonyms, para, más formal, in order to or so was to, eh, más un infinitivo, siempre llevaban un infinitivo, to plus infinitive, but it also appeared so that, para, pero esto llevaba una oración, ¿os acordáis? Sujeto y verbo. And also for. For was also then. It was probably produced for the company itself. Uh, produced for the company itself. Then for is used plus a noun. Then what we are going to deal with today. We can elaborate. Que utilizaré unos linking words para expresar contrast, ¿vale? Y que cada uno porta una estructura. And purpose, finalidad, tienen varios, in order to, y so as to, so that, y for. Y cada school porta una estructura que me depende. In order to, or so as to, plus infinitive, like Shakespeare, to be or not to be. So that, plus a clause, me es una oración, me es un subject de un verb, and for is used plus a noun. Yeah? Then, now it's time for my explanation. I took it from Cristina Cabal. And I send this by mail. Os enviaré eso para que tengáis. Well, my explanation then. Clauses of contrast. They are introduced with the following words or phrases. I have here introduced many. Cristina Cabal, Afrika Mols, así. Pero ¿quién se anima a donar a Bui? ¿Quién se anima a practicar Bui? Es que están en blabé. Blue color are the ones we are going to deal with in this unit. But we have but or though, even though, though, despite, in spite of, however, nevertheless, while, whereas, yet, still, and on the other hand, por otra parte, then all of these introduce uh, clauses of contrast. But we are going to deal with although, even though, despite, in spite of. Let's start. Come on. Although, even though, or though. They are synonyms, but depending on which, which you are using, it has a different um, sentence order. Then, and moreover, even though is more emphatic than although. And though is informal and can be used at the end of the sentence. I don't use it uh, much. I don't use it. Look at the examples and pay attention to the punctuation. Very important. Although, even though, though. It was winter, coma. Then, aunque era invierno, coma. El contraste es que it was warm, hacía calor. ¿Vale? Entonces, although, even though, or though. It was winter, a coma. Always a coma. It was warm. Or you can start by the contrast, by the other side. Um, it was warm, although, even though, though, it was winter. Then, uh, if you write it here, you have no comma. Or, it was winter, it was warm, though, at the end of the sentence. I like this one, hmm? but this is correct. And remember, although... Although, the pronunciation, aunque, but, well, I have here, you have here the explanation of but, they didn't have to work, but they want you. Then, in spite of, despite, are followed by a noun, a gerund, or a sentence, but. If you use a sentence, you have to introduce the fact that. You understand? Then, the first one. 
in spite of or despite can be followed by a noun. Puede ir seguido de un sustantivo. Despite the rain, we went out or he went out. The rain is un sustantivo. Or in spite of the rain, we, he went out. A pesar de la lluvia, sustantivo, salió. Number two, the second option. It can be followed by a gerund. For example, despite winning, he was sad. What a contrast, ¿no? Qué contraste, ¿no? Despite winning, uh, a pesar de haber ganado, está triste. Or, in spite of winning, he was sad. Then, it can be followed by a gerund. And number three, the third option is followed by a sentence, but very important. If you decide to follow it up by a sentence, you have to introduce by the fact that, always, por el hecho de y la oración. Tienes que utilizar el hecho de y luego la oración. Very important is the fact that. Despite the fact that, Despite, introducimos the fact that, y ahora la oración, sujeto y verbo. It was raining, he went out. A pesar del hecho de estar lloviendo, o que estaba lloviendo, salió. In spite of the fact that, oración, it was raining, he went out. Then, very easy. Followed by a noun, by a gerund, or by a sentence, by a clause. But... Using the fact that, el hecho que. But if the clause of contrast comes second in the sentence, there's no comma, como siempre. Si se cambiamos, he was at, despite winning, no hay comma. Clear? In spite of it all, a pesar de todo, let's go on. Uh, I will send you my mail, however, and nevertheless, sin embargo, while or whereas, a mí me gusta más para contraste solo whereas, mientras que, mientras tan, mientras que, el so, um, el so, el coronavirus, así en España va a mes, mientras que en China va a menos, ¿no? Están recuperándose, whereas, so in contrast. Uh, yet and still and on the other hand. Este es, pues lo explicaré igual, pero con no me voy a en clase de Wii, no voy a explicar así. Tengo esos apuntes que vos enviáis. También vos enviaré los chocs, ¿eh? para que practique en casa. And how to express purpose. ¿Cómo expresamos la finalidad? ¿Por qué hacemos las cosas? La razón, the reason why we do things. La razón por la cual hacemos las cosas. Well, they are introduced with the following. To, in order to, or so as to, plus infinity. Per tal de. ¿m? Estas tres. Esta más informal. In order to, y so as to, más formal. But all of them followed by infinity. We saw in the example that we can also use for, but for must be used plus a noun. O si utilizamos un verbo, como es la preposición, iría en gerundio. ¿Vale? And, number three, so that, or in order that. ¿No? El that de normal siempre tiene que ir seguido de una oración. So that, plus a clause, or in order that, plus a clause. Then, three different ways. What happens if the purpose is in negative? Si la finalidad es en negativa. I was running, estaba corriendo, so as not to be late. Per tal de no arribar tard a la feina. To express a negative purpose, no podéis ser como Shakespeare, to be or not to be, ser o no ser. Porque eso no es una finalidad, eso es negar un infinitivo. Y quiero pues, eh, negar una finalidad, per tal de no... ¿Mm? La única manera sería so as not to plus infinity. Per tal de no, so as not to, plus infinity. Let's see an example. Number one, two, 
in order to or so as to plus infinity. One, I go to school to learn English. Learn sería el infinitivo. ¿Para qué voy a la escuela? To learn English. I studied hard in order to or so as to pass the exam. El infinitivo, ¿lo veis? Estudié mucho para aprobar el examen. De tal de aprobar el examen finalidad. Number two, for, plus a noun, or a verb in gerund. Two, they went to a restaurant for dinner. Pero un sopa. For dinner. En dos rayetes, la que distinguió que es un sustante. At school, we used the chalk for writing on the blackboard. En la escuela utilizamos la tiza para qué. ¿Cuál es la finalidad? Si utiliza un verbo, ¿qué posición? Seguido de gerundio. At school, we use the talk for writing on the blackboard. Per tal de escribure, per escribure en la pisada. ¿Vale? Esto es el uso que hacemos de las cosas. ¿Vale? For más gerundio es el uso que hacemos de las cosas. At school, we use the talk for writing on the board. Pero es for y sustantivo. Si ponéis un verbo, tiene que ir en frundio y es el uso de las cosas. I use a pen to write, uh, for writing down. I use a computer for working. ¿Mm? Number three. So that, in order that, plus a clause. He studies hard so that he can get good marks. Es una finalidad de presente. Mirad cómo está marcado para que veáis que es una oración. Sujeto y verbo, sujeto y verbo. He studies hard, estudia mucho, so that he can get good marks, para sacar buenas notas. He worked hard, pasado, so that he would or he could get promoted. De nuevo, seguido de un can o de un could, si es pasado. He worked hard, eh, trabajó mucho, para que conseguir que le eh, promocionaran en el trabajo, que le ascendieran, ¿vale? Traducimos para que la ascendieran o para conseguir, pero si utilizamos el so that, va seguido de una clause, de una oración. ¿Es clear? Es fácil, ¿verdad? Con este esquema podéis ya saber las diferentes formas. Remember, in negative purpose, we use... In order not to, or so as not to. He wrote it so as not to forget it. We stay at home in order not to get coronavirus. ¿Por qué nos quedamos en casa? Para no coger el coronavirus, ¿vale? Para no infectarnos. Es la finalidad. In order not to, or so as not to. Clear? Yeah. What do we have to do now? Go on page 200. I don't remember the. You have the area. Yeah. Um, 148. I'm going to write it down here. Page 148. Yeah. And you have 9a clauses of contrast and purpose. And you have the explanation here, although, even though, though, in spite of, or despite, and the uses, although, though, even though, plus a clause, yeah, in spite of, or despite, after, is followed by a gerund, or a noun or the fact that my last sentence, my clause, que es un sujeto de un verbo, and here you have clauses of purpose, to, in order to, so as to, plus infinitive, for, plus a noun, and so that, plus a clause. Then you have the same explanation here. And what do you have to do now? Now, for homework, for, oh, I didn't remember, this Friday is the 1st of May. 
It's the labor day. It's the trabajador. There won't be class. No ni habrá clase. So you have to work hard. Then for next Wednesday, you have to do this. A. Complete the sentences with one word. And B. Rewrite the sentences. For example, we are very happy in our new house. Esta mitad, esta al medio, porque sería though, there's a lot to do. Muy, muy, muy felices en la casa nueva, aunque hay mucho por hacer. Would you like to do it together, number one and two? Well, let's see. We love the film. The fact that it was nearly three hours long. Nos encantaba la película, a pesar de que casi duraba tres horas. Está the fact that más una oración. ¿Qué será? Oops, today. In spite of or this despite, because it has the fact and a close. ¿Vale? Entonces aquí sería, ponéis, we love the film, despite the fact that, or in spite, uh, no, sorry, the fact that it's only despite, no, in spite of, sorry. Despite the fact that and a close, because if you realize, I'm going to, oh my god, where was it? Yeah, followed by Yeah, followed by a sentence only despite the fact of, and despite of the fact, well, I think it's only despite, yeah, yeah, only despite, without the feeling despite, yeah, or in spite of, both are correct. Um, number two, Carl doesn't like spending money, though he's very well off. No le gusta gastar el dinero aunque está es adinerado una persona adinerada está a mitad está el Joe que le faltará even though very good porque el even tiene que ir con el Joe even though entonces faltaría even ya yeah? you have to finish it uh, for homework and here you have to write the sentences. I love this. Me encanta eso. ¿Por qué? When you are writing a composition, an essay, you have to show that you have a variety of language que domináis el idioma y que podéis decir la misma, la misma idea con diferentes estructuras, variedad del, del idioma, del lenguaje, ¿no? Riqueza, las estructuras. Entonces, haciendo esto, decís, bueno, voy a expresar lo mismo, pero no voy a repetirme en la redacción, ¿vale? Por ejemplo. Despite Gerundio not getting very good reviews, I thought the book was fantastic. Aunque no tenía buenas críticas, yo pensé, pensé que la, el libro estuvo fantástico. ¿Vale? Y te ponen even though. Even though no puede ir seguido de Gerundio. ¿Va seguido de qué? Muy bien. Va seguido de una oración. Entonces tengo que poner una oración. Even though, sujeto, the book, didn't get, verbo, very good reviews, I thought it was fantastic. Let's try. Well, number one. We stayed at the bed and breakfast so as not to spend too much money on accommodation. So as not to, es una purpose, una finalidad en negativa. So as not to, Va seguido de infinitivo con you. Vale. Ahora me piden. We stayed at a bed and breakfast so that. So that. Yo sé que es un conector que expresa finalidad. Pero ¿qué estructura llevaba so that? Infinitivo no. Vamos a verlo. So that. Tiene que ir seguido de una oración. Lo tenéis aquí. So that. Más una oración. Más un sujeto y un verbo. Eso es lo que voy a hacer.
we straight na petrol pack past so dot kene gutri the so dot ya so dot tiene que ir seguido de una eh, de una oración del sujeto so dot we en pasado cuando expresamos una finalidad de pasado normal será con el could o con el would we wouldn't spend too much ¿Lo entendéis me cambian el conector para saber si yo sé utilizar o cómo continuar la oración. Como so that también expresa finalidad, pero yo sé que so that tiene que ir seguido de oración, tengo que respetar las estructuras. Are you ready? Yes? Ok, then for next week, para la semana que viene, me termináis esto. ¿Mm? Very important clauses of contrast. What we are going to do now? I'm going to explain to you what to do. Now, what we are going to do now? Now, um, I'm going to send you all the grammar explanation by mail and I'm going to send you uh, the reinforce and grammar extension because I didn't remember but this Friday is uh, this Friday is the labor day, the working day, so you have more time to spend on working on that. Moreover, I'm going to send you a video uh, explaining to you more about purpose and online exercises just in case you want to spend your weekend with English. Have a nice weekend, have a nice long weekend and see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.